Animate Project 1, Stage 3. We're going to color in the body of the car. Things don't always work out the way that they're supposed to. Try what's written in the book. I couldn't get everything to work, and it might be the difference between the 17 and 18 versions of the program. I'm not positive. I just know it didn't work for me. So what I was doing was picking up the selection tool and clicking on the body layer to select it. Hello body layer, there it is. Let's click on that to select it. Now if you zoom in onto this you can see that the body layer is selected. It's got the hatch marks around the stroke, but if I select the fill and click on the fill and I pick up the deep red that I want this to fill with, absolutely nothing happens. So it's supposed to fill it by simply by clicking. I am not able to actually get this to pick up unless I select it with my selection tool and then if I try to apply the fill to it, I still can't get it to fill. So what I figured out I have to do is pick up the paint bucket and apply the paint bucket to it. So if I select my paint bucket and I click in the middle of the object, it's going to fill with the paint. If I pick up my line and I apply no stroke to it, the stroke should disappear. And it does. So now I have no stroke I've got the red fill that I need. Let me zoom back out and fit this in the window again. The next thing we need to do is work on the window. Now we can't see it, we just covered it, so click on the window layer and drag it up above the body layer. Now that should already select it for you. Again, I can't get it to fill, I want to make it black, so I select the black, nothing happens because the window layer is selected, pick up your paint bucket tool again, and you should be able to click, make sure you're clicking inside that window frame, otherwise if you miss, you're going to end up filling the back again. What I'd like to make sure, you can either click on the area inside the window, or if it doesn't work for you, you're going to have to click with the end of the cursor exactly on the line around the window. So that is what you might have to do if you accidentally are filling the red behind it and changing that to black. Now we're still leaving the green around the window, but next we're going to double click and with the selection tool and pick up the wheel. Now remember the wheel we have grouped. We're going to do the paint bucket again and this time we should still be loaded with black. We're going to click between the outer and middle circles to change that fill color to black. Let me zoom in so you can actually see this a little better. And I'm going to click in here and fill that area with black. I want to click inside the center circle and fill that with black and then in each of the cutouts that we did we want that to get filled with black as well. We're going to change the color of our fill to a medium gray and click inside this and you're going to have to do each section because it might divide out left over from what we did earlier. So make sure that whole area gets filled. Next we're going to change the stroke attributes using the ink bottle tool. The ink bottle tool lets you change the color of a stroke without selecting the specific object. Any of the strokes that you click will be affected by the defining tool setting. The first thing I'm going to do is go to edit and deselect everything. Then I'm going to change my view to fit in window so I can see everything I need to work on. The next thing I'm going to do is select my ink bottle tool. And I know that nothing is selected so I'm going to make sure that I have made my change to my stroke color to black and I'm going to change the height of the stroke to one point. Having done that, I'm going to click in the center of 
the window, which is going to change the green stroke to black and reduce the size of it. Next, I'm going to zoom in so that I can select the lines easily. And I'll go back to my ink bottle tool and I need to select just the line. So make sure that the pointer on the cursor is directly over the line and I'm going to click and apply that change from two points to one point and changing from green to black. If you take a closer look at the lines, you're going to discover that they extend a little bit past the body. So we're going to fix that by changing the line. So pick up your selection tool, click on the line, and no caps. Shortens it down just enough. So let me zoom out, press the spacebar to access the hand tool, and I'm going to slide over just a little bit so that I can select the line and again change the caps to none. Now mine sticks down just a hair and I might just bring that up just a smidge because I think mine's a little bit off. There, that's a little better. Okay, now using the selection tool I'm going to double click the wheel group so that I can go back into the group again. Now this is where we're going to have to step away from what is being done in the book because what they're telling us to do isn't going to work. The next thing that they tell you to do is to choose the ink bottle tool and change the color to a medium gray but if I do that it immediately changes the entire thing. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to zoom in so that we can see what's going on a little better and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to deselect everything. We can't have this selected when we try to change the colors. So now I'm going to pick up my ink bottle tool again and I'm going to change my fill and stroke making sure that I have a medium gray for my stroke and it is a one point stroke and now I'm going to click in the center of the circle. Changes the center to that one point gray. Next, change the middle circle then change the stroke color to black and click the remaining green strokes to change them to black. And I missed one that I'm going to have to go back into. Now make sure that you have clicked the actual strokes if you click the fills, you might have changed something incorrectly. Click on Scene 1 to exit back out to the main stage. And we're going to zoom out and pick up the Selection tool. Hold down your Alt key, click and drag to the right to create your front tire. We're going to continue on creating the accents for the vehicle. On the body layer, click the Outline button. We're going to select the Accents layer. I'm going to pull in so I can see exactly what I'm doing and using whichever tool you would prefer to use with Object Drawing Mode turned on, create the two curved shapes that represent those reflections on the car's upper body.
After you've got both of those drawn to your satisfaction, use the selection tool to pick up both objects, hold down your shift key, and apply a white fill with no stroke. Show the body. Select the fill color and change the alpha to 50% to make the accents semi-transparent. And be careful because I just changed mine to a gray. We want that to stay white. We're going to add the body lines next. Change the body to outlines again. You're going to want to use the line tool for this and you're going to select a stroke color of white with a 50% alpha. Now I'm going to use the green that we were using before just simply so that you can see the drawing that I'm doing and then I'll change my color. Click and drag to create your line and these are very thin lines. Click and drag, click and drag. Now use your selection tool so that you can bend those lines. I'm going to zoom in so we can see the sketch a little bit. Make the bends to make it match the sketch as best as you can. The lines are pretty harsh, so we are going to adjust them to give some texture to the artwork. We've got all three of the lines selected, so we're going to go to Modify, and we're going into Shape, and we're going to convert the lines to Fills. And you can see the change that was made. Now, those hard edge lines are going to need to be modified. So we're going to go back to Modify, Shape, and we're going to Soften Fill Edges. In the pop-up box, you're going to set the distance to 2 pixels and the number of steps to 4, and choose Expand and click OK to apply the change. Each edge of the shape is now expanded by two pixels and it moves in four steps from the original alpha value from 50% to 60% or entirely transparent. So at this point now I'm going to turn the body back on and I'm going to click off to deselect so that you can see there's a there's a slight blurred edge on there that we did not have before. 